Temperature effect on plants. Cold injury. Tropical or subtropical plants of North America are damaged by frost or temperatures above freezing in crops such as maize. Certain plants such as bananas are damaged at 13 degrees Celsius, rice plants if exposed to 16 degrees, in the pollen stage will not divide, cell division, and crop yield is lowered. Actively growing plants, especially herbaceous species, are damaged or killed by temperatures of only minus 1 to minus 5 degrees Celsius, Many of these plants can be acclimated to survive winter temperatures of minus 25 degrees Celsius or lower. In regions where air temperatures drop below this, many plants have underground meristems protected from extreme air temperatures by soil or snow. They avoid or escape cold rather than being cold-hardy, tolerant. Most species that survive freezing temperatures do so by tolerating some ice formation in their tissues. Several higher plants can grow and even flower under the snow, where the temperature is close to zero degrees Celsius as the snow buttercup, Ranunculus adonis, often called geophytes or spring ephemerals, as well as winter cereals. They grow slowly during the winter and thus often have a significant head start when the snow melts. The native species, especially, then grow rapidly and proliferate and flower before later species overtop them or before trees above them leaf out. Lichens can photosynthesize at minus 20 degrees Celsius and below and certain bacteria can grow at temperatures of minus 22 degrees Celsius. Snow algae can also grow at the freezing point of pure water and below. The lower limits for the active growth of organisms have not been determined. Generally, hardier plants can survive with more of their water frozen than less hardy plants. But there are several mechanisms of hardiness. In practical terms, minor increases in hardiness could have a major impact on world food production. Frost hardiness typically develops during exposure to relatively low temperatures, example, 5 degrees Celsius, for days. Temperatures down to minus 3 degrees Celsius are sometimes required for maximum adjustments. Deep supercooling most deciduous forest species and fruit trees avoid freezing in some tissues by deep supercooling to temperatures as low as 40 degrees Celsius. Xylem tissue in hardwoods is too compact to permit the formation of such ice crystals. When freezing does occur, xylem parenchyma cells are killed, the wood becomes dark and discolored, and vessels become filled with gummy occlusions. Wood rotting organisms often invade such injured trees. When the xylem ray cells finally freeze, the released heat of fusion causes a sharp temperature rise, as when osmotic potentials are determined microscopically. Deep supercooling is a survival mechanism for some plant tissues. When freezing does occur, ice probably forms within the living cells, and they are killed. Such species do not grow where winter temperatures drop below about minus 40 degrees Celsius. Extremely hardy woody plants, e.g. birches, willows, do not deep supercool. The extracellular freezing process is similar to non-hardy herbaceous plants, but ultimate hardiness is much greater. Large ice crystals form, drawing water from the cells until all water of hydration, bound water, is removed. Mechanism Many mechanisms have been proposed to account for chilling as it disrupts all plant metabolic and physiological processes. As the temperature is lowered in chilling-sensitive plants, lipids in cell membrane solidify, 
crystallize at a critical temperature for a transition phase from liquid to crystalline will depend on the ratio of saturated to unsaturated fatty acids this temperature is the critical temperature causing cold damage as indicated the high critical temperature at 13 to 19 degrees celsius in sensitive plants development of frost tolerance in cold resistant plants involves an increase in the quantity of saturated fatty acids or the proportion of sterols increases to keep the membrane functional the lipid model suggests that a membrane exists as a liquid crystalline condition having optimal enzyme activity and permeability is thus under control below this temperature the membrane exists in a solid state and this change brings cracks or increases in permeability leading to leakage of ions from the solutes casing mitochondria damage enzyme activity is also disturbed leading to the accumulation of glycolysis enzymes due to lack of degradation and the amount of atp produced is less this also results in chloroplast and cytoplasm enzyme imbalance if the temperature is raised soon enough the membranes return to the liquid crystalline state since this phase transition is completely reversible and the cell recovers if metabolite built up and solute leakage are allowed to occur to any great extent. However, then cells are injured or killed. It has been observed that some cultivars are more sensitive to cold than others, although their fatty acid ratios appear to be the same. These differences could be caused by different sensitivities to the accumulated metabolites than to the initial effect on the membrane. The development of frost hardiness is a metabolic process requiring an energy source. This is provided by light and photosynthesis. Factors that promote more rapid growth inhibit adjustments such as high nitrogen in the soil, pruning, irrigation, and so on. Non-growing or slowly growing plants are more resistant to several environmental extremes, including air pollution. This can be reverted if the plants are treated with high temperatures provided the freezing period is not long enough. This allows the toxic effect of enzymes to be overcome or the level of toxic effect is not reached. Mm -hmm.